If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial. So ahead of the EFL Cup final this weekend, I thought we would have a look at the two teams. A completely unbiased view, of course, and um, see what we think we could expect from the Cup final. The only reason I'm doing this really is because it's between two Premiership teams. And we should be able to form some sort of judgment and give an insight into what we expect to see. So what you can see here is a spreadsheet with the teams ranked 1 to 20 based upon their current league position and how they've performed against each other. So we're looking at form lines, basically. And um, if we look, uh, typically you'd arrange this home and away. So we're going to have to make an adjustment for um, teams that are playing at home and away. But if you look at Man United, uh, you can see really, you know, against the top half of the table, they've won against Spurs. Um, away, they've won against West Brom and West Ham, when West Ham were much lower. But um, you can see generally they're not winning that much. Um, and if you look at the bottom half, then they're obviously winning a lot. So the interesting thing about this is, you know, they've still got to play, uh, I was going to say they've still got to play Man United, they've still got to play Everton, West Brom, and they've got Man City, Arsenal and Spurs away. Bit of an ask. And they've got to play Chelsea at home as well. So, you know, they've been on a good run of form. Will that continue? I'm not so sure. If we look at Southampton, uh, when they've played teams in the top half of the table, you can see they've got one win against Everton at home. And um, and that was because it was Ronald Koeman. Um, I'm not sure if there was any other particular reason that, that uh, they won the match. I was at that match. I remember that very well. But uh, if we look against that, you know, the record is pretty poor, to be honest, isn't it? Look, 0-2, 1-4, 1-2, 1-3. And they can't win away. Um, in the top half of the table. Um, and they can't really seem to win away in the bottom half, although they have had three notable wins there. But generally, they're tending to win against lower half teams at home. Now, of course, the EFL Cup final is at Wembley. And um, as a consequence, um, it's a neutral ground. So you can sort of nullify it somewhat. Um, and, you know, that will have a bit of a change in terms of the way that you view things. So if, if I invert this, I mean, first of all, let's make a note of this. Basically, um, against teams like Southampton, uh, Manchester United at home is scoring um, a goal, and they're conceding about 0.6. So we can sort of say, you know, if Southampton, uh, if, Southampton if, if Man United are at home, they're scoring about 1 and conceding about 0.6. If we look at um, Southampton playing away, um, actually when we've got to do the top half haven't we really, uh, you're sort of, I mean they're not really scoring basically, <laughs> uh, which is a bit wor bit worrying, so what we, you know, we would say that, that let's, let's have a look at that again, it's, it's pretty poor, hmm. maybe we'd, we'd allocate them 0.5 of a goal, and in terms of uh, how many they concede, the, the the average is quite high, you know. We're looking at about 1.8 or, or or thereabouts. It's uh, it's not particularly great. So if if we took them those in isolation, um, you can see that that's quite heavily weighted uh, to Man United. But let's let's flip them round and uh, and see if we can uh, get a slightly different view on things. So um, Southampton, when they're um, playing at home against those teams towards the top of the division, you can see the problem that they've got here is they're not scoring that many goals. So, you know, I could put in a 0.7 uh, on that occasion, and if we're looking around here, they're conceding about, uh, about double that, which is not great. But you can see that reflected up here. You can see it's mainly red or grey, which means they're losing um, or it's a draw. If we look at Man United, then they're not exactly great, um, but it's sort of balancing out a little bit better. So uh, if I add up those two, we'll see where we end up. Um, and in fact, we should invert those if we want to um, keep those against the top values. So if I do 2.2, 1.3, 2.8, 1.1, and I'm going to average those two out again. And we've sort of nullified um, the effect of home advantage by just flipping the two around and playing, e getting the teams to play each other. So we're looking um, rather pessimistically here for Southampton at um, 
you know, a Man United side that could possibly score two to three goals and a Southampton side that's probably going to struggle to score one. And therefore you would have to favour uh, Manchester United and I'm sure that that is reflected in the odds. But when you look at this, there's a couple of mitigating factors that you may want to adjust this for. Um, Mikel Lovic-Rekerting uh, is out after being injured in the Europa League. And Southampton have signed uh, Manolo Gabbiadini, who is on fire. So, in fact, you know, maybe knock off a small amount over here and add a small amount over there. But you can still see that that would be weighted um, to Man United if we look at it completely objectively. And um, the last time I looked at the odds, I think they're about 1.8, which is basically sort of, I'd say, more or less about right, maybe slightly on the short side, because it hasn't taken into account that all the historical stats are saying that Southampton don't score that many. Um, but with the addition of the new striker in the transfer window, that has added a bit of punch up front. And I think really, if you summarise the game, it's gonna. he is the joker in the pack. He could be the guy um, that gets the goal, that um, creates the opportunity. And also, um, if you look at the, the prize that's on offer, obviously Man United would like to win a trophy, but Southampton are absolutely desperate to win a trophy of that nature, having been 38 years since they were last there. So I imagine they're going to put a lot of effort into it. However, there is a skill gap. You can see that reflected in the league and the stats that we've put up here. Um, and that gap is reasonable. So when I turn up to the match on Sunday, I'm going to go for a really good day out. And if we win, fantastic. And if we don't, then I've had a really good day out. That's my philosophy that I'm going to take to the final. And I hope it's an entertaining one um, for the neutral uh, amongst us. But uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I, it's difficult to view it with impassionate eyes. Um, however, hopefully I've given you a bit of insight into um, how the market is pricing that particular match.